Text appears, Middle Tennessee State University Disability and Access Center presents Effective Communication with Dr. James Tate and Dr. James Respress. A woman stands at a podium and speaks. She is joined by a younger woman and man. We want to introduce ourselves today. We are all from the Disability and Access Center. My name is Patty Dawes and I've been with our office for two years. And I'm Sarah, and I've been here since 2012. And my name is Russ, and I've been here since 2011. We have some distinguished speakers today that I want to introduce, if they'll stand up. First, we have Dr. Respris. He's been with MTSU as the Manager of Training and Development for the last eight years, and we're so grateful to him for doing this training session for us. Thank you. And also we have Dr. Tate from the psychology department, and he's been in our psychology department 22 years, is that right? Awesome, thank you so much. They both have some wonderful information for you guys that's going to help you. This educational series is designed for our students to enhance their educational experience, and I think you'll learn a lot. We're going to have more than one, so this is the first of a series. The next one is going to be October 28th, and that one will be about inspirational stories and how they affect the access um, for disabled students. Also in February, we have one that's called Improving Self-Advocacy Skills. That will be very important. In March, that will be entitled Ac Accessing Services for Students with Disabilities. And then in April, The World of Adaptive Technology and What's in It for Me. That one I think you'll really get a lot out of as there are so many new technologies available now for students with any type of disability and we're trying to incorporate more and more of those into our services. At, at this workshop or what educational series is designed to help you effectively communicate with your professors and we've got two wonderful speakers that are going to show you exactly the way to do that. So I hope that you'll enjoy it and thank you very much for coming. A presentation slide shows the words, Disability and Access Presentation, Dr. Chris Tate. Dr. Tate stands behind the podium and reads from a presentation as it's shown. Okay, as I understand it, um, I was supposed to talk about uh, how you as students can interact with the professors so that uh, you can communicate effectively with them. and. Uh, have your needs met uh, with as little uh, confusion as possible. A um, little bit of introductory part here. That is, you know, you're just asking for a level playing field, not for any advantages over anyone else. This is your right. And generally, most professors understand that. Talk to most professors, they have no problem whatsoever with, with this. Uh, many of them are quite familiar. They've had with disabled students. They've taught many disabled students, so they kind of know the procedures. Every once in a while, you know, something new arises, but you just inform them. And some of the newer ones uh, have less experience. I had no experience when I started here. It was completely, I had no idea. Don't take that lack of knowledge or awareness as being lack of support. It's just a lack of knowledge. Okay. Um, Professors do want to help. They're busy, and you're one of 100 or 200 students that they have that semester, but don't take that as a sign of lack of interest either. Before you talk to your professor, I think you should do that first day of class, if that's at all possible, you need to be prepared. Have your paperwork from Disability and Access ready for your professor to look over, sign, take their, is it the pink or the, or the yellow copy? Are they still doing that? One of the copies, anyway. Okay. Be prepared with that. Develop a game plan. You know, this is not a big, major operation, but you might want to come prepared. Make sure that uh, you know what you want to say. Okay. Organize your thoughts. If it, if it helps, write down a script. You know, Either in your head or write it down on a piece of paper what you want to say to your professor. Hey, I need to talk to you. Da, 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 da. Here's my paperwork from Disability and Access. The more prepared you are, the more poised you'll be, and the less likely you are to forget something that might be important later on. Okay. 
approach with professors, if at all possible, after class, the first day of classes. Um, oftentimes, students have just shown up the week before, the day of a class period before we were to have a test. It's like, well, maybe you should have given me a little bit more notice, you know, that sort of thing. Okay. Ask if you, could, if you could have a moment of their time. Remember, uh, don't interpret a, a no as a bad thing. Uh, there have been semesters where I taught classes back to back in different buildings and in different rooms. And I had 15 minutes to go, for example, from Peck Hall to the nursing building, then to the third floor on the BAS. Now, I haven't had to, had to do that recently. But, you know, sometimes you just don't have the time. Make some other kind of arrangement. Okay. Say, hey, can, I, can we meet uh, during office hours? I need to talk to you about this, that, the other, like, my disability arrangements or accommodations. Okay. <laughs> Explain the purpose of talking with them. Let them know this is what, what I need to talk to you about. Okay, if they have enough time in that 15 minutes before between classes, or maybe they don't have a class after that, they can you spend a few minutes in the classroom and finish the conversation out in the hallway if that's if you're comfortable with that. Okay, um, but let them know why you, you want to talk to them. Most of the time, as soon as you mention disability and access, they'll know exactly what you're talking about and go, okay, sure, show me the piece of paper and you know everything gets done in in, in a couple of minutes. At, at, at the most, actually. Provide them with your paperwork, okay, so they can put it in their little file and everything along with the roll. Make sure everything's official. Make your professors aware of the accommodations you are entitled to. Now, most of the time, the accommodations involve extra time in a quiet environment, that sort of thing. Depending upon the disability, there's other things. Um, but make sure they, they know that. They can't uh, well, I think that they should be aware of, of the accommodations. Okay. If you have any kind of atypical request, requests that are, not, that are out of the ordinary, uh, such as having class notes in a special format, make them aware of that as soon as possible in order to allow them sufficient time to get these to you. Now, it's been my experience with disability, with, uh, disability and access that when this is the case, um, I've gotten an email, for example, during the summer about a student who's going to be in my fall class who might need special accommodations because uh, they, may, may, they might have uh, visual disability, that sort of thing. But don't assume that that's, the case. that's going to be true in your case. Okay. But allow them time. If a professor post their test dates in the syllabus, which most of them do, you've got ample time to be aware of when you need to schedule your alternative testing time and testing place. I do that. I put the tentative dates anyway, and I usually tell students if I'm going to change them, I usually I let them know two weeks ahead of time. Depends on how the schedule or the lecture, lectures are going. Most professors would prefer that you take the test on the same day as the rest of the class. Okay. If that's at all possible, that's the ideal thing. I think your professors would look at that as, well, you're not getting any extra time to study. You're getting just extra time to take the test in a quiet environment and whatever, whatever other accommodations that are required. Okay. If this is not possible, though, uh, let your professor know as soon as possible so they can make arrangements. Do not wait until the last minute to schedule with disability and access. I'm sure I get an amen from the front row on that, okay? Because uh, there may not be an available time slot on that day. Okay, so you need to, I mean, if, if you're given the syllabus first day of the semester, you know that somewhere like for my class, September 17th was the first test. You can at least let disability and access know two weeks ahead of time. So you can make sure that there's a spot for you on that day. And that way the professor only has to, you know, everybody takes the test the same day. They don't have to grade them all at the same time. They don't have to, you know, move around and go, oh, my, I'm missing somebody. Oh, yeah, that's right, the, the, the disabled student. Okay, i got to go over there or have the, the test returned to them in the mail. Keep lines of communication open with your professors. I mean, keep professors aware of your situation. I've had students who had medical issues 
and they let me know, look, I'm going to miss class because of this or that, okay, um, or this has to happen, or I tried to schedule with disability and access, and there were no slots that I could go to. I have a class before and after and that sort of thing. Uh, there were no slots on that day. Is it okay if I take the test the next day or a day early or something like that? But uh, let your professor know that as soon as you find out. Be proactive, in other words. Don't let them know after the fact. You know, try to let them know ahead of time. Or if you're anticipating the problem, let them know that you're anticipating the problem. For me, do it by email, because I'll forget if you tell me in class. Or tell me in class and email me. And I tell students, email me. Okay. If you email me, I know it's right there in front of my, me. I'm looking at it. I can write it down, or I can punch it into my uh, phone or whatever, the calendar on that. And do this as soon as you are aware of the situation has changed. Don't wait to the last minute and go, but you got to do this, doctor, so-and-so, because whatever. It's like, let me know ahead of time. And keep in mind that you're one of many students with whom the professor interacts. They may not remember. They might not remember your name. <laughs> okay. That doesn't mean they don't care, and it doesn't mean that they're not interested. Now, I've got a... 104 students in two sections of abnormal psych. I know the guys because they're eight in each class. <laughs> okay. The rest of them are all named Heather or Jennifer. <laughs> okay. Um, so just keep that in mind. And from time to time, you might have to remind the professor of your situation. Email me. Tell me a million times. I don't care. You know, nag at me because I'll forget. But I think if you take those steps that I've outlined, you should avoid, I think, it, it, any problems for the most part. You're letting your professors know ahead of time. You're being prepared to let them know what your needs are. Uh, you're letting them know if the situation changes ahead of time. You're not getting your feelings hurt because you're realizing, well, you know, I'm one of 104 people, or you know, the st he's kind of giving me a, you know, brushing me off, but it's because he's got 15 minutes to get to the next class or whatever like that. Um, I think you can avoid feeling like you uh, are being ignored or dismissed. And you can get your, your uh, needs met. Did that in less than 20 minutes. Yay. Any questions? All right. Thank you much. Dr. Tate leaves the podium. Dr. Russ Press takes his place and presents his slides. Welcome, and I do appreciate you coming. My name is William Russ, and of course, this is going to be easy for you. You just simply smile. I ask you a question, you respond, and I just keep on going. That okay? All right, here we go. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit of, about this situation that perhaps may arise, but first of all, what I need for you to do is uh, to identify the mistake in the presentation. The image reads, See a can you find the, the mistake? And shows the numbers one yes, through nine, right. with each number a different color of the rainbow. Surely you do. What? D. D? Okay, you did. Who said that? You? Yeah, you got it. That's exactly what it was. Uh, as a D that. So perhaps my primary purpose is not to help you to identify mistakes, but more so uh, to be able to get better results when you interact with your professor. That okay? So I think uh, oftentimes to get the results that you're looking for, you got to remember that your professors are human. And because they are human, there are some things that go along with being human, and that's having emotions, having feelings. So we're going to talk about how to uh, interact with them where you can win. And I think you can win with professors. They're not bad people. They come to work and work a job just like you do. Most of you work, do you, or do you not? Well, if you don't, I've been working for about 40 years. Okay, so uh, these are good people, and uh, don't think that they're not here for you. They really, really are. So when this kind of situation happened, and uh, you look at a paper, you say, oh my goodness, I don't like this. Well, your first response should not be to blow a fuse. Okay, by blowing a fuse, that's not going to help a whole lot. That's going to make situations better, right? Yes, no? An image shows a man and a woman face-to-face -face shouting and pointing at each other. Oh, okay, all right, hanging out with me. Yeah, you don't do this in terms of a situation 
Uh, you get face to face, you get upset, you want to work the professor over. That's not a good thing. If you work them over, then they won't look good when they go home. That's not what they want. So what are some dangers in terms of your confrontation and interaction with your professor when it's not appropriate? What may be some dangers if you have inter inappropriate interactions with your professor? Bail me out. You could end up in judicial affairs. You could end up in judicial affairs. So what happens when you go to judicial affairs? Do they serve you Subway sandwiches? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I've never been to judicial affairs. I mean, it may be a cool event like this. What happens when you go to judicial affairs? Do they pay part of your tuition? An image reads, it's cool to be smart in colorful stylized letters. What happens? You can hear it and you could get kicked out of school. That's right. So I would just strongly encourage you to be smart with your interactions with the professor. As you talk to them, stay calm, stay focused, stay polite, and show interest in hearing what the professor has to say also. Uh, in most communication, it's not a uh, one-shot shoe fit all. And uh, of course, uh, in terms of dealing with professors, a lot of times, and most of the time, their point of view is important too, not just your point of view. So you want to go into that context with good manners, with good ethics. Okay, just being simply polite, that's something that's easy to do. I'm quite sure you all were raised that, to be polite. Uh, at least I was. I was uh, raised by a mom who was in the Marine Corps. And uh, I wind up being in the Marine Corps, and Marines are very pleasant, easygoing people, correct? That's what you've heard about Marines, correct? <laughs> okay, yeah, there you go. So what I want you to do, I'm going to give you about 30 seconds, and I may need you to go over there on that side, is that okay? And I want you to sit next to someone, so you got about uh, 30 seconds to think about all of the nice things that you can say in terms of social amenities when you're talking to your professor, okay? Whatever, they, whatever comes to your mind, I'm going to come back and I'm going to ask you what might those social amenities be. Okay, social amenities just means good manners. Okay, what are some of the good manners you can use when you interact with your professor? 30 seconds. Go. Yeah, exactly. Okay, are you ready to share? Yes, Bo? Okay, we'll start off with the professor. That okay? <laughs> what might be some of the things you want to hear uh, in terms of interaction that matters when uh, your students are talking to you? You like to be yelled at. That's not yeah. a problem, right? Keep your tone civil. Keep your tone civil. What does that mean? Keep it low. Keep it low? Yeah. Okay, excellent. What say you? Mm. What might be some good tips in terms of good manners when students interact with professors? I don't know. Eye contact, right? You want to get up about one feet from them in their face, right, when you're talking to them. That's a safe distance, right? Yes, no? No. No? Okay, what might be a safe distance? <clears throat> Three, feet. Three feet, six feet, right? Beyond um, uh, reach, okay, that's safe. What say you? Um, what was Start by greeting them. Start by greeting them. Okay, all right. What might be an appropriate greeting? Hey. Hey, yeah. All right. Simply hey. Yeah. Okay. What about you, sir? Uh, it's refrain from accusing anyone. Oh, no. Come <laughs> on. Now you want the professor to know your point of view, so you got to set the record straight up front. Get them straight. Don't waste any time. Let them know that they're wrong and you're right, and that'll get you a long ways with the professors, right? Put them on the defensive. Yeah, you put them on the defensive. That's right. I would say amen to that. Yeah, here's some words of wisdom for you. No, don't do that. You're absolutely right, okay? So, it's not what you say. You guys have heard that. It's not what you say, but it's how you say it. You've heard that, right? Okay, I'll go a little bit further and say that's not the end of that equation. What is said matters. How it is said matters. And guess what? When it is said matters. So, he reminded you the best thing you can do when you want to have a conversation with the professor Set some time aside. Give yourself a chance to sort of de-escalate, calm down a little bit, write your script, know the points that you want to share with the professor, and you don't want to do it in a civil way. 
Okay, you don't want your professor going home upset, mad, or even thinking about you doing grade time. You don't want them to remember that great experience that they had with you. Some things, I'm gonna just quite be frank, frank with you, right? Some things are subjective in life. You do know that, right? Okay, so I won't go any further with that. Okay, so when talking to your professor, something else you wanna keep in mind is perceive the moment. What might that mean? Perceive the moment. Don't hold me hostile to my slide now. What might that mean? Perceive the moment means, I guess, say for an example, you set a three o'clock appointment. You meet with your professor, you go in, and the professor's face is contorted. Not about you, but perhaps something has happened before the meeting. Would it be advisory? Would it be a good thing to go ahead and have the meeting or to perceive the moment and maybe reschedule? I don't know, tell me. What should you do? You could ask, is this a good time to discuss something with you? Absolutely, see, this may not be the very best time. I don't know if you're in a hurry, whatever. Would you like for me to come back? Would that not be safe? Would that not be okay with you if a student saw your face contorted to say, you know, hey, I, I don't know what's going on, but I'd be happy to come back some other time. Would you push back from that? No, absolutely not. So that really matters about receiving a moment. And I would say to you, exercise some self-control over your emotions. Keep your emotions in check when you're interacting with the person that has to give you your grade. Not just give you your grade, I'm sure that professor is giving you what you earn per se, right? Uh, but nonetheless, that does make a big difference. You have to look at yourself and say, now am I at a place where I can really talk to them? Should I meet with them as scheduled? Should it be now or should it be later? An image shows the words now and later with boxes next to them. The box next to later has a check mark in it. I don't know, but you need to decide that. You wanna think ahead of your message, the way that you're gonna present it and the impact it may have on that professor. Once you put those words out, once you share those emotions, guess what you can't do? You can't put the car in reverse. You can't back it out. And saying I'm sorry doesn't necessarily undo what you've said, okay? So keep that in context, keep that in mind. Stephen Covey, I just really love this guy. He's the author of uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Students, et cetera, et cetera. He says to seek to Understand, then to be understood. What might that mean to anyone? Come on, you guys on the back row. Jump in, bail me out. It means listening and understanding the other person's point of view before shoving yours onto them. Oh, absolutely. You want to go into the dialogue seeking to understand what it is that they have to say, their perspective about whatever you're challenging them on. You don't want to go into a situation thinking, I gotta defend myself, I gotta defend myself. No, disarm yourself. Okay, that's not gonna get you anywhere, absolutely. So be aware of your approach. Make sure it's non-threatening, it's non-confrontational. Here's some food for thought. Choose your emotions very, very wisely. Because you never know when the bridge that you think you have burned with that professor, you may have to cross that baby again. Text reads, Class is knowing what to say, when to say it, and when to stop. Okay, so I'm just saying, it's life, that's the way it is. I wouldn't kid with you about that. Would you agree or disagree with that? Yes. Yeah, absolutely, I would too. So I wanna help you to uh, navigate some blind spots. The blind spot relates to your body language. What might that mean, body language? What is that? Nonverbal. Nonverbal communication, absolutely. The message is there, your body is talking even if you don't perceive that your body is talking, your body language is talking. And it's very important that you understand that other people are listening. Your professors are listening to your body language. It's really important that you keep your body language in check because whether you know it or not, your actions actually speak louder than your words. A pie chart shows that 55% of communication is body movements, face, and arms. 
38 of communication is voice tone, modulation, and pauses. 7% of communication is words. So this is sort of a little pie that uh, uh, delineates what part of your conversation another person's perceived is only 7% of your conversation is perceived by words. So that means your voice inflection, all those other things that you do, your face, your facial expression, they do make a big difference. So every moment you may say something about where you are in terms of your emotions. So if you go into the professor's office, you're breathing hard, what do you think they perceive from you coming into the office breathing hard? Come on now. Don't just sit here. I'll stay on this slide. You rushed to get there? You're angry. Yeah, you're okay. Yeah, say that again. You're angry. You're absolutely you're angry. That's what they would perceive. Would you not perceive that? Or would you not? Be in the situation, probably. Well, I tell you what, if a person came in my office breathing hard and they didn't run, uh, I'm going to ask to meet with them out in the hall. I'm going to try to get myself to a place where I can have quick egress. I can get away from them. All right, that's just the way it is. Self-preservation. So your facial expression, your eye contact, your posture, all of that is continually revealing to the professor how you are feeling in that moment. So do know that your body language is constantly talking. So your body language does matter to the professor. Questions? I got answers. You got questions? I got answers. I can even make up answers that may not be accurate. <laughs> questions? No questions? No questions? OK. Thank you so much. I do appreciate your attention. Sorry about the uh, Alabama moment at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes fumbles just happen, right? Thanks so much. Okay, I'll tell you later. A logo for Middle Tennessee State University. Here's with the words Center for Educational Media, produced by Audiovisual Services in the College of Education. Copyright 2015, Middle Tennessee State University, I Am True Blue.